Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Weekly Conversations podcast. Today we are discussing Taylor Swift, the most annoying, frustrating, irritating, annoying musician that ever existed on the 21st century of Earth. Today I'm going to be starting off with the fan base the Swifties, as what they like to discuss themselves as, not discuss themselves, but what they like to be called, the most irritating, annoying, frustrating pimp squat of sods that ever roamed the earth in today's generation. All they do is fucking scream, they're like, Taylor, I love you! Taylor, we adore you! Taylor, we want to kiss you! Like, that's their mentality. I swear to God, if today the woman released a fragrance, an album, a goddamn signed book, just like a normal notebook, with her signature in it, those fucks will run into the shop, they will go to the internet, they will stop fucking pressing their, I don't know, their mouse buttons being like, bye, 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 they'll buy like 20 of the same books, if it's like the same one, they'll buy 20, I swear, if she made like 40 variations representing every single album she ever did, with like a special note and her actual hand signature in the book, they will fucking go fucking crazy. They will buy the mother load of the shit. They will fucking go bonanza for the shit. They will do anything just to get it. Those fucks are not normal. They go to like one of her concerts. Concerts. They do anything. No one gives a fuck but the fans. They will scream their eyes out. They will say, Taylor, we love you. Taylor, we want you. Taylor will be there for you. They make no sense. They want nothing but just to get the woman's attention. Being like, we love you. We're Swifties. We're gay. We're homosexual. We're transgenders. We love you. Like, they're not normal people. They have no necessity in the world of today. They are just there to be a Swifty. That's it. And when you see TikToks or posts or anyone being like, you know, Taylor's the best, we're Swifties, fuck you and fuck you. We buy the cardigans, we buy the albums, we buy the vinyls, we get the CDs. Like, you actual non-existing sons of bitches or pieces of shits is what your name should be. Get a life, go out in the real world, take a deep, deep refreshing breath go out in the world explore the world around you have a good life don't start fucking going to tiktok instagram twitter not even snapchat or facebook but those three main essential platforms and start saying we're swifties we should be respected because we love that woman. Anyone that talks shit about our queen, we start bashing them in the comment section. Because we have no life, only our dignity and pride for that woman. I swear to God, if that woman was Hitler, a racist or something, Swifties will stand not in front of her, behind her. Literally, behind her. She could be a leader of a country and they would still be the type of individuals to say, we are behind this woman. We are homos, we are gays, and we are lesbians to support this woman. That's why we love her so very much. Come on, people. Come on. Crawl out of your space. Stop acting so like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. She's the most important woman in human history. For God's sake, catch a breath. Walk out in the world as Brett Cooper would always say. Touch grass. Touch grass. Get a life. Get fresh air. Do something, you lonely, self-isolating, literal, what was the word, Uh, introverts, go out in the world, be extroverts, be people, live a life, make friends, talk about anything else, like I swear to god, in a car Swifties, no one except you would play her music in the car, no one, no one plays her music. Unless they ha- unless like a normal individual had it on the radio or had it on their playlist and just went, you know what, I don't mind. It's not as if shit's gonna get any worse, but I swear, Swifties, if you had them in a car, all they do is play that shit every fucking day. 
They have no life. They are just pips, squeaks, and irritating sods. The most annoying thing is, I've seen a Swifty on TikTok buying one of her cardigans and she was shaking. She was like taking the world's heaviest deep breath, being like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Once she found out she got the cardigan, she was screaming. She was fucking throwing the world's largest trash him over a fucking cardigan that said, what was it? Like, uh, Falcon or something. And she was like panicking. Literally, her foot was shaking. She was taking the world's heaviest deep breaths and just wanting in anticipate waiting at in anticipation just to fucking see a cardigan come out by saying it's been ordered your purchase has been placed we've taken the money out of your bank card like that's how much that dumb girl was waiting to the point where she went and just was going oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god, oh my god. when she found out she screamed she was gay she was homosexual probably who the fuck knows like, Swifties, please come in the comment section and give me heap. I would love to have a second video debating the Swifties. Them coming in the comment section be like, Fuck you for being such a very fucking homosexual. You are offensive. You are a racist. You are a horrible person. We don't like you. Please come in my comment section, please. I would just love to stop mocking you in the comments. Being like... What's wrong with these people? These are individuals that are so out of reality. They've lost sight of the 21st century that they've come and defended a woman they don't even know. They have no actual connection with. They're like, we do have a connection with. With what? A woman's ex-boyfriend. You have connections and feelings. And you connected this woman so much to such an in-depth level of sense where you're willing to tell me you communicate with this woman in such a very personal average level to a normal human being where you're willing to tell me a woman's past breakups is what the fuck you do you people are not normal you all suck to continue taylor swift's aristotle oh jesus i've seen people on the internet post i swear mainly on tiktok of this woman's store and it's just a bunch of gay swifties waiting outside of her shows being like we're in a twitter oh my god twitter this is a good one for any normal people who are not swifties to understand me there was one tweet i saw of like a bunch of swifties stood above a hill and even though the place was absolutely full, they were like, Michael Jackson couldn't do this. Michael Jackson didn't have people waiting outside. You fucks don't understand. Michael Jackson had like, what, 300k, a million people, literally in attendance in an open space, not even an arena, in an open wide field space. They were screaming his music, fainting at the sight of seeing him. And you can pair some bitch, some 30 year old bitch that just talks about uh, exes to Jackson. Jackson, a man that sold 34 million copies of Thriller, a man that literally broke records that no human being could ever put their own pedestal against her. Ag against him, I mean. Like, putting Swift to Jackson is stupid. Trust me, if someone said Taylor Swift is better than Rihanna, Rihanna, I was literally being like, you sick fucks. If you ever compare Taylor Swift to Rihanna, you are sick in the head. Like, I bet her to Beyonce. Beyonce means nothing to me. She is shit. But literally comparing Rihanna to Swift in a conversation is not not normal if someone told me rihanna is better than taylor swift i would literally tell them absolutely 100 percent without one width of a doubt but someone telling me taylor swift is better than rihanna you are not normal you are not normal you you shouldn't have a conversation with me about two female musicians in this industry being compared to each other Compare her to Beyonce, for all I give a fuck, because Beyonce and Rihanna are not on the same pedestal, they're not on the same level 
of success. They're not on the same level of making good, listenable music. Like Rihanna is a woman that would make timeless hits. Go back to the albums, listen to that shit. That is a woman that will make music for the time of history. But Swift, Swift, to go to an era store and listen to all the garbage cans that she made throughout her 10 plus years in this music business and sit six hours, six hours. And listen to that garbage can for six hours. I would rather sit in an arena for what two, three hours listening to an Adele concert, like watching Rihanna sing, watching any other female musician I enjoy singing, performing, enjoying the time with the fans than watching Swift. Yes, Swift for six hours singing. My boyfriend broke up with me. He found another woman. I am a loner. I have no friends. I am a retard. I am a menace. I have nothing. So I complain to my problems about exes to the world because I have no life and I am an idiot. I'm possibly even more further than just a retard. Like, that's how far we've reached in the 21st century when this woman came in the industry. She is cocked. And to make an error stop, being like, this is my breakup error. This is when this boyfriend broke up with me. This is when this piece of shit bro said this to me. Like, I swear this woman will stretch anything, literally anything, just to go, please respect me. I love you. Ah, oh, she has no life. And to make a tour and to sell tickets for between... What, 1,900 to 2 grand, like the lowest ticket I saw was 1,500 and something ish dollars. And the most expensive ticket was 2,001 dollar. Yes, 2,001 dollar for a ticket. Like, who's paying 2 grand to see this woman? Brother, with 2 grand, I could buy anything. I could buy a MacBook. I can buy 2 monitor screens. I could buy, I don't know, a nice, um... A electrical what and a, you know fancy watches not a, an expensive watch but digital watch or something i could buy airpods with two grand i can goddamn buy and a speaker more worth more than two grand would be better but for god's sake people is this what you've come to you're willing to shell out two thousand dollars for swift i'd probably rather shell out Less than $2,000 and watch Adele. Like, come on, people, you lost your dignity. You could watch hundreds of musicians and it would end up being two grand in the end or something. Seriously, people, be on the same pace with me. Because watching Swift for an hour store, really, and then going to the movie theater and watching the film, and then a bunch of Swifties just holding hands, running around, like, circling around in, a, in the middle like a cult. Like, Swifties and Swift are not normal people. If they were, I swear, a country committing war against any other country, they wouldn't be normal. I swear, Swifties and Swift are just a cult. They are a cult. They probably murdered someone or they committed some sort of, I don't know. I, don't, I couldn't even think of something. That's how much it's difficult to think of something. Because she's a swift, what would they have to do? Kill someone in order to get something? But make this Aristotle make sense. She's charging a shitload of money, saying we made it to a billion dollars. Probably she's gonna make it to more. For charging a bunch of innocent, sick fucks. Two grand. This is two grand for a bunch of idiots. Idiots that give n no fucks but to see swift. I have my respect and dignity left in me. They gave up the dignity, respect, and their livelihood for a swift. Literally for a swift. Women gave it up. You'll see very few men because men at least have their dignity left. A lot of women just went, fuck this. Swift. Like, seriously. Is this what we've reached in the life of the 21st century? But to continue even further than the swift, Arista, her albums. Oh, shit. I'm telling you now, before 2010, her two albums that she made before 2010 were good. Like, if I just went now and looked it up, I swear to God, by name, 
Wait, Taylor Swift to Google. I swear to you now, I would literally tell you the two albums she made before 2010 were the best. Literally, to Taylor Swift, her first album on October 4th, October the 24th, 2006. Good one. Fearless. Good one. 2008. And anything after that was shit. Anything after that was shit. Because that's when she was in her country era. She made good music. I swear. Once she made it to 2010, she started ruining herself. 2010 up until present day. Ruined herself. She, she went to, from making an album titled by her real name, Taylor Swift, and then making Fearless, and then doing an entire thing. After that, she ruined it. She's just milking it. I've heard many stories about why the albums became a thing and how they became. It's all because she started dating men, finding them attractive, and then just start started taking advantage of what was happening and just started saying here we go this is what we're gonna do a guy break up breaks up breaks up breaks up with me if that makes sense and then i just try an album about it like honestly woman honestly all she does is go the boyfriend this he fucked me like, come on, woman. If she was still in her country era in the music business, I think today I would have probably been convinced to listen to this woman, to adore the woman, to continue on listening to her. But honestly, after 2008, after Speak Now, she ruined it. She absolutely ruined it. One, she walked out with... No, she did... Swift, uh, uh, Taylor Swift, and then she did Fearless. Then when she did Speak Now, I mean, she ruined it. Speak Now was the downfall. Speak Now ruined everything. Then she did after that. She went with uh, 90... Uh, wait, she did Red. Then she did uh, 1989 right after, if I'm not wrong. And then she did a bunch of her albums ever since. She did Reputation. She did Folklore. She did the remake of her albums then she did lover in 2019 then she did midnight and now poetry department like honestly people this woman's shit this woman's actually shit is this what we've lost our dignities to a woman that's become shit like come on guys come on she's shit she's actually shit get a life get a life we all know she's shit 99 percent of the world's population we all know she's shit but come on after that, what what more do we say? Like, poetry department, I'll listen to it because she said Malone. I was like, you know what, I'll give it a chance. Listen to it, did not like it. Like, honestly, if she was still in her country era, if she still continued it up until present day and she never switched to pop, I swear to God, she would have succeeded. I would have rooted for that woman. I would have been like, congratulations for all your awards. You're very well deserving of it if she was still in her country era. But no, she ruined it. She absolutely ruined it. She went pop. She started talking about ex-boyfriend. She started talking about how they ruined her life, how shit went south, how everything went wrong. Like, actually, come the fuck on. Taylor Swift is the shittiest woman I will ever meet. In my whole life, I will never get to meet that any more of a shittier woman than this one. She absolutely sucks. Stick to country. Don't walk into this. I think if she now did country, I wouldn't listen to it. Unless it was good or I wouldn't do anything. Maybe I, even if I listen to it, I'm like, I refuse to listen to it. Maybe if, even if it sounded good, I'd be like, no. She ruined it. She went to speak now. She went in her, like... I'm a queen. The boyfriend broke up with me. I oh, did everything. Like, fuck off, woman. Fuck right off, you piece of shit. You ruined everything. Ruined everything. Is this what you want now? Is this what you want? Pop music. Ex-boyfriends. Like, fuck off. Fuck off. And then, you know, then came the era of, like, the dating of the boyfriends. And then everything. Ugh. She sucks. She sucks. 
Like, why would you have to make a whole album about breakups? This is what the problem is with that woman. The only reason why, she dates a man for a few years, has a relationship with him, she tells him to fuck off, gives him a few hand gestures, hand gestures, and then she fucks off, writes an album, says, you know, he broke up with me, <laughs> he ruined my life, I don't love him, he's a piece of shit, <laughs> he sucks. <laughs> Ah, uh, this is not like you're crying. Like, fuck right off, woman. I'm not here to listen to you complain about dating Harry Styles, uh, Jack Gyllenhaal, Zach Efron, uh, what do you call him? John Mayer. And then the fucking last boyfriend before she went to, uh, uh, what do you call him? Uh, I forgot the name of the football boyfriend, but you get my point. Like the one before him. But, oh yeah, Travis Kelsey. Before she started dating Travis Kelsey, she was with some British man for goddamn six years. I swear to God, I've had an opinion for this for years in my head. For a few years in my head, but I never said it out loud to anyone. I don't think she's ever going to settle down. I swear to God. Like, I think now she's just going to be with um, Travis Kelsey for a few years. She breaks up with him, writes an entire album, probably called some sort of like The Heartbreak or You Piece of Fucking Shit or You Can't, probably the album or Dickhead. Like, she's just gonna date and break up, date and break up, date and break up. She's never gonna settle down. She's never gonna have a life to be with someone. She's never gonna experience the life of having. A good committed partner that actually loves her, that actually wants to be with her, that's actually gonna have a life. Like, woman, come on. She looks like a lovely woman, but probably has some very fucked up, sick in the head intentions. Settle down, get married, have a husband, have children, experience motherhood. I would love to see this woman write an album, like an actual real album where it doesn't discuss relationships, boyfriends or anything. Speak about normal life, speak about struggles, speak about any topic other than relationships or boyfriend. She really marked, she really is marking this situation to its core. Like, I think this woman... Maybe after 2012 or something, for some people, she just made a lot of individuals go away. They didn't want to listen to her. People maybe gave up from the first moment they heard of her. Maybe a friend maybe played the music to someone once, and the guy was like, my man, or this girl was playing to her friends, and a bunch of people were like, no, don't play this. Like, honestly, guys, this woman, I don't know if I should feel bad for the woman, because she's been with many, many partners, and many, many people, and she's never once settled down, said, you know, I'm with this lovely man who really cares about me, and I know I care about him dearly as, as much as he cares of me. Like, she's never going to have that moment in her adult life. She's in her, you know, she's in her early 30s. She's 33 now, or 34. She's still a very young woman who still has a lot of her years ahead of her. When is she ever going to find someone that's going to care for her, love her, and just... Make her understand that settling down and moving on in life is a good idea. Like, honestly, I wouldn't have to hear her going, The boyfriend broke up with me, he did this. Like, her last album was literally her discussing. Her last boyfriend before she was with Travis Kelsey. Like, honestly, woman. Fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. No, I'm not listening to that garbage. I'm not listening to that shit. If I had to listen to something, it's probably you two albums before 2000 and before 2010, honestly, before 2010. She just ruined it. And for me, she's never going to let she's never going to let go, as I said, of talking about heartbreaks and relationships and any of those stuff because that's all she ever talks about. She has nothing else. There is no new topics. I could literally hand her a million dollars in physical cash and say, listen here, if you are able to write something or think of a good idea that doesn't revolve around relationships or it's your current one or your present one, and it's just any other topic, any other thing, any other choices of topics, that would be great. I would love you. But she wouldn't give up those stuff. She wouldn't do any of those shits. 
because she is so out of line and anyone that ever confronts her about such a topic i'm pretty sure she's gonna be very clingy and hold on to the subjects of boyfriends and ex-relationships if i had her on this podcast and sat down with her and gave her the exact same words i'm exchanging with everyone here now i think she's gonna just leave go out bounce before i even have the chance to go in further like honestly for fuck's sake do anything else woman write anything else you're just so annoying he's so irritating son of a bitch be more different i would love if she never went to the pop section she never entered that category i did anything i swear when she was in that country era it was her being more different more open more ideal minded of what life is she was in that room for like two years or something in that room and then she went to a different room locked herself in she's been in there ever since she's been in there now for 14 years people 14 years she's been in pop that's not good that's horrible very 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 bad and she's been in there ever since i wish she just locked that door go out of the room lock the door and then go back to pop i mean country sorry but she ruined it for herself she ruined it she's just a woman that has no voice has no talent and then yet here she is talking about a bunch of shitty boyfriends in life she tries to be something because every time i think of her i remember that one clip from tiktok where she's trying to think i got thick skin and an elastic heart by Sia. She tries to sing that and she shit. She can't sing it. She can't hit the tone and the pitch. She's trying to tell coach a girl on, on the voice of how to hit the note. And then she can't even hit it herself. Fuck's sake, Swift, you have a shit voice. Let it go. Let it go. And then all of her songs suck. Bad blood. Santa maybe a place a place in this world fucking I don't know shake it off all those shit songs are just horrible I don't want to live forever for me that's a good song I like it don't get me mistaken it was a good collaboration between her and fucking Zayn Malik great chemistry absolutely fantastic execution but for fuck's sake woman any other song that's not one of your countries suck there are very few songs i do enjoy for the woman but other than those she fucking sucks fuck off get lost have a life have a fucking life and don't get me into the conversation about how this woman every fucking time she releases an album her fucked up music charts in the top 10 for le- for like a week for a week maybe one or two songs are left but no one's listening to those shits from the moment they charted like she covered the top 10 twice three times no one gives a fuck woman you are shit only people are put like the only people that are listening to her music are swifties it's just a bunch of fuckers that have no sense of life or human revolution are just listening to that woman deeply as like she's uh, a leader or some sort of god that, that like we pray we love you you're a genius no one likes her no one loves her except swifties that are just playing her music she reaches the top 10 she's just everywhere anytime people when i follow i follow billboard on instagram i follow them on twitter and every time in the beginning not now but at one point where she was just starting people were like Ugh, another week with swift i would always agree with those comments and now recently anyone that says swift is not charting every time like the comment swift doesn't exist another week like the comment like i myself and many other people agree she's shit she has nothing she's talentless she's crap she's bullshit the swifties are a bunch of cucks she is a devil and she's never made any good music after 2010 like 2008 before like her first two albums i'll give her that honestly if she kept going i'd give her now she's just shit she's just shit 2010 to 2024 14 years cuck absolute cuck no one listens to this woman except swifties 
I swear to God, if a Swifty comes up to me and starts saying, Fuck you! You shouldn't have said that! You shouldn't have made this comment! You should have never have said this about our queen! Fuck you! Fuck you! I don't give a fuck about your opinions. I don't care how you feel. I'm not here to listen to your criticism, your opinions, your frustration. I'm just saying what I want to talk about. I'm not here to want to give people an automotive, uh, an automotive to start giving me their feedback or their opinions. I'm just saying what, how I feel. I'm just wanting to talk about a topic that I want to talk about. And if you feel something towards it, don't say anything. And if you want to, I'm not going to start responding and being like, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry for this. Or, you know, I didn't mean it that way. I don't care for me. It's not a deep topic. It's just me wanting to talk about a woman I don't care about. Then yet all of you people talk about it in such a deep thing. And to go further, anytime anyone charts number one, like especially when this woman charts number one, it means absolutely nothing. It's just a bunch of Swifties that are just listening to that shit. Or some bot she probably paid off and they are just listening to that song. Like to that number one song or, or the top ten songs like a number one for this woman means nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's actually shit. No one's listening to that shit. Like, I gave up on this woman. I Like, the last thing I heard of her is 2017. And after that, I haven't heard from her since. Like, absolutely nothing. She's just been shit ever since. Absolutely. And people that buy the records, it's not because they like it or enjoy it. It's just a bunch of Swifties. They're like, oh, this, like, this bitch has just made multiple copies of her last album. And just started making multiple variations of it get it in this color get it in this color because she doesn't give a fuck about the singles she just cares about the album sales so she could look on top i swear to god woman get lost leave the country business like leave the music business i don't give a fuck get lost suck a dick you are a shithead i don't like you i don't love you i don't adore you i'm glad i unfollowed you from instagram and i'm glad that i don't have you on twitter anymore i don't see you on my feed anymore you are nothing to me anymore. You are shit. Even when she promoted her old shit on Instagram and I saw it, I never went down to like Spotify or YouTube and listened to that shit. I never did. And now I'm on Apple Music and I still don't listen to her shit. Like, even though she's on my playlist, it doesn't mean I listen to her. I just skip her or something. Because I'm not interested anymore. I don't care. If I do listen to her, maybe it's like, eh, you know what, but 99% of it, like, 100% of the time I'd skip, there'd be like very, like little, 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 little percent of the time I'd actually listen to that woman. But I don't give a fuck. And someone's just taking advantage of innocent people for her own profitable gain. She cares about no one but herself. She's just ridiculous, useless. Absolutely nobody. She is nobody. She is no one's care. No one gives a fuck. She tells you, my last album sold 2 million records. Because she just kept making multiple variations of it. And she never gave people that actually deserved her number one charting album to succeed. She's just shit. Shit, I tell you. Absolutely garbage. Garbage. Useless woman. Fucking hell. <sighs> but other than that, thank you all so much for listening to today's podcast. I really appreciate you sitting down, listening to what I have to say. And I'd love to hear your feedback and comments in the comment section. I'll catch you all in the next one.